Hello, my name is Alan Prost and I'm talking to you about pressure regulated volume control. This is part of a series of short videos on the modes of ventilation for Module 4 in the REST220 course. We're going to be talking about pressure regulated volume control, often known as PCCMV. And uh, PCMV, and the key word here is the adaptive. It adapts to patients' lung characteristics. So let's see how this works. All right. So, this mode we look at is combining the best of both pressure control and volume control. The uniqueness of this is that we get a set targeted volume, just like with volume ventilation, but we also get the benefits of the flow characteristics and the changes as it adapts to the patient's efforts with pressure control ventilation. So it combines both of these modes. The way it does that is that it varies breath to breath the targeted tidal volume. So what this means is that it works as a pressure control uh, mode, but the pressure control level is adjusted automatically by the ventilator itself to adapt to the patient's lung compliance. So as their compliance decreases, this will increase the pressure control level to keep or maintain a set tidal volume. It doesn't do it instantaneously. It takes several breaths, so the breath, tidal volume can vary slightly between breath to breath, but it's always going to be targeted. So this is quite a unique variation in what we've been looking at from before. So we think that, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry that my little pen here isn't working that well. So cons we consider this to be kind of a, a negative feedback or a servo control type mode and or a dual control. The beauty of this is that we get both the benefits of volume control and pressure control combined into one mode and it's become very popular. It can be used in CMV so that all breaths are supported by the mechanical ventilator or in an IMV type mode. So, the pressure in pressure regulated volume control, it calculates what pressure is needed based on the patient's lung compliance. So, if the patient has low lung compliance and we want a tidal volume of 500, it would have to choose a high pressure control level. If um, the patient's lung compliance is very high, it could use a lower level of, and it will adapt to whatever the patient needs. So. When the ventilator mode first starts up, it has to determine the lung compliance. So we have this startup phase where the patient's lung compliance is determined, and it can be done a couple of different ways. Sometimes it starts off with a volume control breath, or sometimes a pressure control breath that it varies the pressures up and down a little bit so that um, it can uh, adapt to what the patient needs. All right. So I've got a few little problems with this uh, most device I'm using right now. Once it figures out what the compliance is, then it can target the tidal volume and establish what plateau pressure it will use to achieve that. Now, this is the beauty of it, is we do get a true plateau pressure with all the benefits of a pressure control breath. So the flow characteristics and the time cycling are all benefits that we can achieve while achieving also our required minute ventilation to ventilate the patient. All right, so. It's guaranteed a minute ventilation, so we get that benefit just like with volume control. And yet we also get the pressure limiting benefits of pressure control. So we get the better distribution of ventilation, we get improved oxygenation, we get um, control over the mean airway pressures. All right, all those factors come into play. All right, so the disadvantages is that we can inadvertently get some high pressures with this mode because, of course, if the patient's compliance decreases, the tidal volume is always going to be trying to be achieved. All right. So the ventilator may make a mistake or may inadvertently give high pressures, but we can control those with some alarm limits. All right. It's a good use, uh, mode to use in patients with moderate to severe lung disease. So again, it's kind of looking at very similar type patients we were using with when we had just straight pressure control. But it can be used for a wide variety of different patients. All right. So the phase variable, the trigger doesn't change. We still have uh, time or to the patient. And uh, for most of them, it's either with uh, pressure or um, flow triggering. The limit, it's always going to be pressure limited, but we call this also volume targeting because the pressure limit is going to change, not during a specific breath, but from breath to breath to breath to breath, it's going to be altered a little bit. But during the breath, it will be maintained and it's going to be maintained at a level that allows us to establish this volume target that we've that we've been set okay the cycling this is just like pressure control it's always going to be a time cycled 
All right. So we get the benefits of that inspiratory pause if we set the time cycle correctly. We set a target tidal volume, and knowing that not every single breath will meet that target volume, but if we look over, say, five minutes, in general, the target volume will have been met breath by breath. We're going to set a rate, kind of guaranteeing a set minute ventilation. We always establish a TI, so we get that time cycling element to this breath and the pressure control element. PEEP will be established just like with any other mode, same with the FSIL2, and of course we're going to set the sensitivity appropriately for our patient. All right, so the target tidal volume actually will be determining the pressure control level required. So this still will have a major determinant on the amount of pressure that's being delivered to the lungs, just like with volume ventilation. Of course, our rate is going to determine our total cycle time. The TI will determine our TI total. And the difference between these two will give us our expiratory time. All right, and that's going to establish our I to E ratio, just like with all the modes. So that hasn't changed. So initially, one of the ways that this mode can work is it'll give a, um, the first breath will be a standard volume controlled breath. And the volume that we've, uh, will initially be put in will be your target volume. And it'll find out what plateau pressure is required to achieve that target volume. And then after that, once its uh, compliance has been calculated, all right, because it'll know the volume, it'll know what pressure is required to do that so it can measure compliance, then every breath after that will be a pressure controlled breath. And this pressure control breath, the TI will be established by the ventilator as it was you or the operator, we'll establish the TI. And if you set it up correctly, we should be receiving a inspiratory pause. So we, we like to give ourselves long enough TI so we do achieve this inspiratory pause and all those benefits of the um, well, uh, good distribution of ventilation because we have no resistance to overcome and that higher mean airway pressure. Okay, so we should see waveforms very much like these. And you'll notice now that this actual one here is actually gone down a little bit. So the pressure control level will go up and down depending on variations in compliance. All right, so if the compliance decreases, of course, the pressure will have to go up. If the compliance increases, the pressure can come down. Okay, sometimes, depending on the manufacturer, the, um, this mode can actually start off with a pressure control breath. So it's predetermines by the computer a kind of a set pressure control level, and this will result in a specific volume being delivered to the lungs. And once this volume is known, the compliance can be calculated. So once the ventilator gets a feeling for what the compliance of the lungs is, it'll uh, increase or decrease the pressure control level in order to meet the needs of delivering the preset tidal volume. So we will see slight variations in the tidal volume being delivered from breath to breath. Sorry, this pen thing isn't working that well. So we'd expect to see slight variations in the pressure control level delivered to the patient and slight variations in the, in the tidal volume, but overall the minute ventilation will be uh, delivered. Now the beauty of this mode is that the pressure control f um, element to this mode allows the flow to be determined by the patient's lung characteristics or their inspiratory drive. If the patient was breathing in during this breath, they'd get any amount of flow they want. It's not limited by the ventilator. What controls if they're unconscious or riding the ventilator is their lung characteristics control that inspiratory flow rate. So it's that time constant, which equals resistance times compliance. All right, that's gonna determine our inspiratory flow. So that's just exactly like a pressure control breath. So we combine the best of both worlds in this mode. All right, so we can have mandatory breaths where the patient uh, is riding the ventilator and they are, um, of course, time triggered. All right, or we can have assisted breaths where the patient um, triggers the ventilator. And what's showing here is that we may have, depending on how we have the ventilator set up, um, truncation of inspiratory flow. So the tidal volume in these breaths may be altered slightly. Hopefully though, if we have our TI set up correctly, we'll see breaths like this where we have pressure equalization between mouth pressures and lung pressures. This is our desired breath usually so that we get a good distribution of ventilation and we have nice control over our mean airway pressure. 
Okay, so just to show you that you can see some variations in this mode, a lot more than with the other two we've discussed already than we would see normally. All right, so there will be a maximum pressure limit, and this is a safety mechanism to this mode. And we set that, we establish that. It could be 35, it could be 40, it could be 30, depending on our patient. All right, and so it acts like a high pressure alarm and a limiting mechanism to make sure that. Um, the ventilator doesn't somehow deliver too high a pressures to the, to the lungs. And this is a common feature of many modes, but in this mode it's particularly important. All right? So, and as an example, it could be set to 35, and so the pressure, maximum pressure delivered to the lungs with any given breath would be five centimeters below this. This is a manufacturer's decided uh, safety element, so that the maximum pressure ever delivered with any brush would be 30 centimeters of water pressure. Okay? So, and then, if that volume target can't be met, the ventilator would also alarm, letting you know that your minute ventilation has been decreased. So there's a lot of safety features in with this built into this mode. The ventilator will only adjust the delivered pressure in small increments, exactly about three centimeters per breath. So you won't see widely um, fluctuating changes from breath to breath. So even if their compliance is rapidly changing, or we see something like a kinked endotracheal tube or some other um, sudden change in the patient circuit, the pressures in the ventilator will only be adjusted by small increments on a breath-by-breath -breath basis. And this is a safety mechanism in case um, there's a few breaths where the patient's fighting the ventilator and then they ease off on that. We don't want to suddenly give them a really large tidal volume. All right. So this is an excellent mode. It's widely used and um, it combines those uh, the benefits of pressure control with the security of volume control. So it's a double win for both modes being combined together. All right, in the lab you'll see that oh, there are some concerns about the way different manufacturers have set this mode up. For example, a patient can uh, be inadvertently fighting the ventilator or breathing heavily spontaneously and the ventilator could be tricked into thinking that they're doing a lot of the work of breathing and really decrease the pressure control level. And this can result in very little support for the patient. So you're not, if you're not careful, you can actually increase the work of breathing dramatically with our patients. And we saw this in pediatrics and neonates when we first started using it. So we have to be very careful about observing our patient carefully when using this mode. Thank you very much.